what I would like the world to know is that we've been practicing for this for the last nine years. And during that time, our staff have been practicing, writing protocols, updating protocols, and making this the best possible procedures that we can make. Um, they're very good at what they do, and they're very comfortable as well, and competent. We feel very safe in what we do. We ourselves have developed the protocols, so we know what to do in step by step, and we have a buddy system in which we assure what one is doing is correct for, to protect me and to protect them and to protect our community. By no means do we feel that we are at risk of, of having any issues with uh, uh, contamination at this point. New staff that have come onto our team just in the last few weeks, they've been able to learn these processes very quickly as well and become comf comfortable and confident in what they're doing. I remember when the call came out, it was, it was just an email that said, anybody interested in joining the biocontainment unit team? Um, it, it looked like something that was interesting, it was new. Um, innovative. Um, I was ready for something like that. So I jumped in with both feet and applied. Um, and actually at the time I didn't have enough experience here at the Med Center to be able to be on the team. And so the manager at that time, I, I begged her and you know, I told her, you know, I have military experience, please let me on the team. And she took a chance and I'm really glad she did. I've been at the Med Center since 2000 one in my primary position is in the operating room. Um, my husband has served in Iraq with 9-11 and the fight in, uh, fight in Iraq and I decided that when my kids were old enough that it was time um, that I gave back and so I joined the team. Been on it for about I think four and a half, five years and it's been a wonderful experience. I have a different outlook, Kate has a different outlook. We have such a fantastic faceted team that we come together and, and deliver some excellent care. One of the things that um, our direct nursing director and I, we always tell our staff, is we don't have to tell them how to be nurses, we don't have to tell them how to be respiratory therapists or techs. We, we teach them how to do their job in the unit. Um, they're already highly qualified at what they do. Um, it, it's, it's really good you know, to be able to be on, on the ground and, and making the, the policies for other people to come along and learn behind us it's very rewarding and, and knowing that we're going to contribute to the safety of the entire healthcare community. Our training is always evolving. We go through the day thinking about new ways to deliver care within the practice with the parameters that Kate and Shelley have set up for us and Dr. Smith and Angela and so we're always adding to it or taking away or looking at it a different way and uh, and each of us brings a different component into that. You know, mine being wearing protective gear like we wear currently in the OR um, is very, very familiar for me. So when I introduce it to new staff, you know, I have a comfort level with it that I think that helps us elude that what we do is intense, but there, we, we will get you through it in a very relaxed and calm manner. Well, well, I'm the lead nurse, so I primarily I have a desk job. So I, I create the schedule. Um, I keep everybody updated on changes that are going on, and, and you know I just maintain the flow of the unit. Um, my job means that I come in five days a week, and um, it's a little different from what the nurses are doing. Um, as the lead, I also feel like I have to lead by example. I never ask the staff to do anything I won't do. So I've been in the room, I've been with the patient, and I've shown them that I've got just as much confidence in the procedures that we've all developed together as what they do. I get to be a nurse and I get to be one of the autoclavers uh, that deals with all of our waste and all of our garbage and what leaves my, the unit has to be safe for the community. So, and I get to go and deliver patient care, learn things new every day. You're, you're there. Well, well, the first thing that we found out uh, with our first patient was when we were wearing masks was that our faces were getting really dry. So then we had to make sure we had moisturizer for the staff to wear. So that, that's one thing. Um, wearing gloves and typing, that's not easy. That, that's a, a new skill that I've learned that now that when I go home and I'm typing on my own keyboard, I feel almost my hands are naked. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but but wearing the wearing the gowns um, 
it, it's kind of nice. It's like putting on your armor, you know, and you can go into the room. I remember when uh, we had our first patient and I actually went to the airport to pick him up. And as I was waiting for him to come out the aircraft, I was, my heart was beating and I was thinking, oh gosh, what am I doing here? This is a dangerous situation. But the moment our, our patient came to us, he became my patient and I just feel, I felt totally safe in the PPE. So yeah, it's cumbersome, but it, it's, it, it's a good thing to have. It's very similar to uh, what we wear in the operating room, minus a couple pairs of gloves. And so for, for a couple of us that come with that experience, Tim and myself, uh, it's easy. You know, uh, the typing is a challenge, but for, uh, you know, again, our background is not pa floor patient care. It is uh, operating room where it's a different, you know, you're handing instruments and things. But in terms of assessments, we can get through them. And, and again, if you have comments, they are video screen away or concerns that, uh, that we address via video conference. So I have no, no issues with the suits at all. I feel very safe in them and f able to deliver care. From my point of view, it gives me a lot of comfort because I, I can see in the room, I can see the patient, I can see the nurse, and I can see that they're staying safe. Um, <clears throat> I, I kind of liken myself almost to Captain Picard because I'm sitting at the, the desk and, and I'm, I'm watching everything happen on a screen. And, you know, and it, it, it is kind of, it's very nice and we can hear really well. Um, one of the things that um, gives me a lot of comfort is if the nurse needs me for anything, we just have a code that they will shout out. Um, and, it, and, and it's really simple, it's I need help in here. And then we know that we need to get help into that room. Mm -hmm. And it could be anything, it could be something to help, you know, maybe lift a patient, or it could be a, an exposure or something that we need to act on very quickly. The video conferencing is a very reassuring nursing tool that we have for us to relate to Dr. Hewlett or talk to CCM, the critical care managers, or to talk to their fellow nurses. Hey, what do you think about this? Do I need to address this? What am I seeing here? And it really makes your comfort level as delivering a nurse because you're, you're not shouting away like you would be on the floor down the hall. Hey, can somebody come in and look at this? Um, it's, they're right there and they're seeing everything that you're seeing. And so uh, in terms of minimizing patient care but delivering it, uh, wonderfully, it's a great, great tool. And, and it doesn't have to be by voice because it also has a chat mechanism in it as well. So we chat to each other that way. And that, that's how they communicate a lot at night when their patients are asleep. So they, they use the chat. The way we would work is um, in the very beginning when our patient arrives and they're very critical, there's two nurses in the room with the patient at that time until we get them settled and we know how things are going to be flowing. Um, once we're able to scale that down to one nurse in the room, we do that. But remember, there's always another person right directly outside the door ready to come in and help if needed. Once the patient becomes independent and doesn't need assistance getting up or, you know, or, or anything, you know, only needs to be given medications or food brought in or maybe go in and have a chat with them every now and again. Then we stay outside the door to give him a little bit of privacy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he knows how to shut off the sound as well to the video system if he's ch t you know, chatting to his family or a physician and he wants privacy. In order to uh, keep the unit running smoothly, um, during the day it takes six staff members and five staff members at night. So with the six during the day, and at night actually, three of them must be nurses. You've got to be able to have a nurse in the room, another nurse ready to be able to go into the room to help her or him if needed. And then you need another nurse that's outside the room that's able to get medications out the, the medication machine, the Pixis. So um, you have that, and then you can have a care tech and a respiratory therapist. We have respiratory therapists, you know, because there's a potential that our patient may be ventilated. Um, so we uh, keep them on staff, but they fill the other roles as well. So like the doffer um, and the autoclaver. Every single one of us know how to do every job on the unit. Um, everybody's a team, you know, we don't look at the techs and say, oh, well, you're just a tech, so you're going to just be doing the cleaning. You know, that it doesn't work that way on our, our team. We're, mm -hmm. we're very respectful of each other and, um, you know, let's say we have a care tech who actually has a, a bachelor's degree in microbiology. 
So he, he's just fantastic. You know, he's a wealth of knowledge for mm -hmm. us. One of the things I want them to know, you know, the, treating this patient is like treating any other sick patient. It really is. Um, the level of PPE is enhanced uh, for the comfort of your staff providers. Um, make sure your, your healthcare workers are comfortable in that and that they know they're going to be safe if they do it properly. Um, they haven't been practicing the way we've been practicing over the past nine years. So, you know, look at what we've done, you know, learn from what we can give you and, um, and we're willing to help you. Absolutely. We're here to, we are here to support them. You know, we've had success in the way that we've delivered care, but we are ultimately there to support them in what they need. And if a phone call away, Kate always answers her emails and her, her uh, voicemails very quickly. If I was going to say one thing, I would say make sure that you always have a donning and a donning doffing yeah. partner because that really helps. That, that gives you a, an air of confidence that somebody else is checking on what you're doing. They're making sure that you're doing the steps correctly and in the correct order. Please don't rush. Take your time. Make sure that you feel comfortable in your layers of protection with, with the tape being secured. Um, make sure you always have a partner look over you before you go, you know, go in to deliver care. And don't feel that if somebody tells you, hey, why don't we retape that, that it's an insult on you. We are just trying to make you safe. We have a very good open communication between our providers um, while we're giving care and while we're getting ready to give her care. Hey, you need to put your extra gloves on or hey, let's retape that arm. I'm not really satisfied with the way that that looks. Um, it's not because we think that you're not doing it correctly. It's just we want to be ultra, ultra safe. Yeah, and, and definitely, you know, watch your your staff and your colleagues around you. Mm -hmm. we, we've actually had a couple of instances um, where um, we got some body fluids on a boot. And so we pulled that nurse out the room right away mm -hmm. and got her out of PPE and, and everything was safe. And then um, we had another nurse who, um, her gown just became loose at the back. You know, it's, it's a Velcro closure. And, and again, as Morgan says, we learn all the time. So now we put a little tape along with the Velcro closure just to make sure it doesn't happen. But when we noticed that that Velcro closure was coming a little loose, again, we, we switched that nurse out. You know, there's, there's no point in taking chances. You know, people's lives are worth way more than a, a gown or a set of PPE. An extra shower. In the beginning, it was a little annoying, but now it's just become common practice. You know, you, you, you don up in that PPE, and then when you leave, you're going to be showering. We are mm -hmm. the cleanest people. Yes. We are the cleanest people <laughs> <laughs> at the med center currently. Yeah. As, we wa as we walk in and out, we are Cloroxed and showered <laughs> and uh, stripped. Yeah. So uh, we are clean. My, my in-laws are very worried about me, you know, they're, they're calling, they tell me to be safe. Um, my husband, he knows what I've been doing for the past nine years. He knows that, you know, I'm very passionate about PPE, how it goes on, how it comes off, and maintaining the, the, the procedures with everybody. Um, he's not as concerned, um, but yeah, th th there's a few staff members that have mentioned, you know, friends don't want to come over. Um, we have a staff member who's... Um, yeah, an immediate family member don't want to see her until she's 21 days out. Um, I, a friend of mine texted me on Facebook last night and says, yeah, well, let's have lunch 21 days after your patient leaves. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you don't want to have lunch with me now, then I don't think I'm going to have lunch with you in 21 days. But um, I, I, I respect it, but it's, we you know, do. it's a little silly. But I just wish people remember we have families outside of this. Most of us are married and have kids of our own that are at home. Mm -hmm. We will not put anybody at risk, you know, that, that we can say, hey, I leave the unit every day saying I delivered my care within the best practice that I have, and I do not f feel that I'm at risk of contaminating anybody outside of this unit. I take pride in what we put in place, mm -hmm. and so I feel very confident going home every day. We're really sad about the nurses. That, that got sick. Um, I don't blame anyone. I don't. I don't blame them. I. I don't know what their procedures were, um, but you know, procedures can be broken easily. I don't know if they had a donning and a doffing partner. You know, that would be really important to have. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got 
two healthcare workers that are very brave because they, they were willing to go in and take care of their patient and they just need the support of all of us. We have a poster um, in front of the person that's being doffed. So, so on the wall, directly in front of them, there's the order. Our doffing partner knows how to do it. In fact, we all know how to do it. But um, you know that once the tape has been taken off your, your gloves, that you're going to be taking your gloves off. You also know that, um, that you're going to turn around so that your doffing partner can then untie your gown. Um, and then it's going to get flipped over and that you're going to remove your gown. Um, you, you just know what to expect next, but yeah, we, ha we have that we list. Yeah. It's more, instead of a checklist, it's more of an order list. So the PPE is going to come off in this order. Uh, and we also have a way of, um, you know, when, when your boots come off, your, your disposable boots come off, you, you step to a different area of what we call our doffing pad. So it's a, an area that hasn't been touched by, you know, your dirty feet from coming out the room. And then, then your shoes get cleaned before you actually step off onto the floor as well. So, you know, we, we've, we've got a lot of process that goes on with taking off PPE, but there's a rationale for each step, even the wearing three pairs of gloves. And, and I remember when we first opened and, <laughs> yeah. and, and we said, you know what, how would you guys feel about wearing three pairs of gloves so that you have a clean pair of gloves under your PPE for taking things off so that your, your skin doesn't have to touch dirty PPE. And they were like, Kate, you're crazy. How, how will we put in an IV with three pairs of gloves? So we practiced it and it's okay and you can do it yeah. and it works. Just takes practice. I think we do a very good job of supporting each other. Yeah. You know, when we, we have an open dialogue every shift change at Huddle to discuss, hey, what's going on in your family life? How, are you getting any issues? Is there any, anybody mm -hmm. hurting you outside of work because of what we're doing every day? And we have that open dialogue so that we, we can support each other. Yeah. So, and I think that works great.